No means of measure can define him. He's limitless in love. Oh, I thought about this for a little while. Limitless in love. And I said, you know what? That tells me this, Sister Brenda. That he don't only love me for being obedient. But he loves you for whatever you're obedient to. He loves every human being no matter who they are. We better watch who we put our mouth on. Come on. Because he's limitless in love. That means he loves everybody. I'm so glad. I was there and out and sorry and unable and wicked and everything I can think of. Plus, I still got some of those old ways in me. But he still loves me. He gave me the Holy Ghost, Sister Mary, and there I got the power to begin to realize some things that I never knew. I was never told, my dad never told me, my mom never told me, but I just got the assumption that Pentecost, if you didn't have the Holy Ghost and you wasn't Pentecost, you wasn't loved. Maybe the Pentecost didn't love everybody back then like they should have. But this preacher is telling you, if he's limitless in his love, you better be the same. Because he chose you to be a royal priesthood. A chosen people. Somebody that will live out what he wants. And not what we want. Lord. Hallelujah. His mercy in the ever and ever and ever. So he's limitless. You can't live, you can't say, boy, he's got to take his mercy on him. He's powerful. The Bible says with God all things are possible. We set up and we think that can't happen. It ain't going to happen. We don't have the money to build a new church. It ain't never going to happen. I tell you it is. I tell you that's His word. That's not mine. I believe with all my heart we're going to build a brand new church. And I believe, Sister Emma, I might have to live down 85 to see it, but I believe these eyes is going to look at it, these feet is going to walk through it, and praise God! You talk about praise God! I'm going to praise Him like I never did before! I'm going to raise my hand, and I'm going to holler with a loud voice, and I'm going to say, God, you are triumphant! God, you can do anything! God, you are my you are my resurrection. You are my life. You are my truth. Yes, yes. Oh, He's most graceful. He shed His grace on us. Did He? Merciful. Somebody said, well, God gets to you. He gets kind of tired of you. Keep on sinning. But this is what I thought about. Peter said, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother? And I'm sure Peter was, I'm going to stretch it a little bit. Seven times and the Lord looked at Peter and said, no, Peter. He said, we give him seven times seven. Praise the Lord. 
He one day, it didn't matter if it took a week, but he said, you forgive him seven times seven. That's how much my mercy is. Yes. That's how much my love is. Yes. Praise God. He said, I want you to learn to have the mercy that I have. He probably could have said this. He didn't. But it's a wonder. He could have said, Peter, when you laid up asleep when I asked you to pray one hour with me, and I come back and find y'all all asleep, he said, if I wasn't going to have mercy, and I wasn't going to forgive y'all, I'd just wipe your head off and got me three or four more. But he's trying to teach you something. He said, I want you to have mercy. Have mercy. Do you know him? Do you know him like this church? Have you ever thought about it? Do you think we need to think about this? We need to clutch it in our grip and say, I want to remember it all because I don't ever know when I'm gonna need mercy. I don't know when I'm gonna need grace. I don't know when I'm gonna need some more righteousness. I don't know when I'm gonna need forgiveness. I don't know when I'm gonna need whatever God's got. You know, we think because of the story I read, we think, well, you got to almost be dying by the way the preacher didn't die. You've got to think, well, I, the only time I'm going to need all this is if I get close to death. No, that's not true. See, because let me tell you something, dear woman and dear men, ladies and gentlemen, the next time you decide to take it upon your lips to put in on a brother or sister, the Bible calls you a murderer. And if you ever needed mercy, you need it then. Amen. You know why? You may not believe this, but you're so close to death, a spiritual death, to live in heaven. <coughs> when we begin to take it on our own to judge somebody, the Bible says you judge a tree by the fruit of bad. Sure, you do. So you'll know if it's bearing good fruit or bad fruit. And if it's bearing bad fruit, you make sure you don't eat none of it. The Bible says sweet water and bitter water can't come from the same fountain. We can't come to church and say, Praise God! Praise God! Praise God! They've been seen in. Praise the Lord. You know what the Bible tells us to do? You know your brother or your sister slips and falls. Get on your knees and begin to pray, God, oh, pray, God. You know why we don't do that? Because we don't love them. You got no love for them. You don't have any love for them at all. But let it be one of your children. Or let it be your husband. Or let it be your wife. Or let it be your mother or your daddy or somebody else. It's about to fall and you fall on your face and say, God, please forgive them. Yes. Because you love them. But yet, Jesus commanded us to love your neighbor and yourself. I've thought about that so many times in my life. And I said, Lord, I'm supposed to love them like I love my own self. I mean, come on, God. I mean, shoot. I just... I wouldn't want to give up my pickup truck. Or I wouldn't want to give my steak up right after Sister Neville got it cooked. And I'm sitting there and the aroma's swelling up in my nose and baked potatoes all good and hot. And I'm hungry. 
And somebody walks in and says, I'm hungry too. I'm sorry, Jack, I ain't got but one steak. And I ain't giving it to you. No, that ain't the way we're supposed to act. We're supposed to love them as ourselves. And believe you me, I've been tried at times. I have been tried. And thank God, I think I passed the test. One of these days we will know. God will tell me whether I made it or I didn't. I want to tell you something, church. He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. There has never been no greater than Jesus Christ. There has never been a man that was ever talked about as much as Jesus Christ. Even denominations that don't believe all the truth constantly talk about Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's right. hey, yeah. Yeah. Hey, now, if that belongs to you, you don't need it anyway, brother. Praise the Lord. He's the Son of God. Don't you remember when the dove said, This is my Son? In whom I am well pleased. Oh my God, I want the Spirit of God to look down and say, This is my Son in whom I am well pleased. Oh, I prayed this morning, Sister Brenda. You hear me? The devil told me that my preaching days was over, and I told him, We're going to take it to the Lord and find out. Because I heard you the liar and the father of lies. So we go to the sun and the hear God is real peace. And we're going to find out if he's pleased with me or if he's not. And what I felt so far by this pulpit this morning, I believe he's saying, I'm well pleased, son. He's a sinner, Savior. The Bible says he came to seek and save them which were lost. Glory. Now I want y'all to notice something here. <laughs> to seek and to save them which was lost. <laughs> what was her name again? Alex. Alexis. She walked into my church. Was it last Sunday, baby? And I saw her back there smiling. And at one time I saw her raise her hand and begin to praise God because we all was. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I'm going to fill her with the Holy Ghost today. That night, he filled her with the Holy Ghost. Oh, great God. Isn't he wonderful, church? We'd all give him a hand clap of praise. We'd all give him a shout. I want you to know something. See, the devil, the devil who was telling me I couldn't preach the Lord, sister, brother, with a little bit of hollering, he began to get shattered and out the door and did because he was confused. He said, my God, Jesus Christ is in this place. He says he believes in truth. He was trembling when he went out the door. Praise the Lord. I ain't felt his presence since. But I felt the presence of the Almighty God. And this morning, the devil has not stopped this old preacher from preaching the word. The devil has not stopped. You can hear the word. If you was fixing to preach, do you know him enough that you would call on him like that? You need to know him that much just to come to church. Praise the Lord. He is a centerpiece of civilization. Don't you think about this. When the children of Israel was in the wilderness and they put up the 
tabernacle. All of them camped around it. You know why? That's where the Spirit of the Lord went. They wanted Him in the center of their life. Brother Nedeville is telling you this morning that you need to make Him the centerpiece of your home. You need to make Him the centerpiece of your automobile. You need to make Him the centerpiece of your workplace. You need to make Him the centerpiece of the doctor that you visit. You need to make Him the centerpiece of the hospital that you in. Is a fundamental doctrine of truth. After all, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, if he's the truth, we better obey it, hadn't we? <coughs> Try to hurry. He's the only one qualified to be called Savior. He said he would save his people from their sins. Do you know him? Did he save you from your sin? You know what? I don't know about you, but I want to holler out. Oh, yes, I know him. He filled me with the Holy Ghost and fire. He saved my soul. He supplies strength to those that are weak. Praise the Lord. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Yeah. Praise God. He heals the sick. Yeah. Remember the man saw him and he simply said, Lord, you can heal me if you will. And Jesus said, with a loud voice. I will. I wonder why. Because the man had faith. He said, Jesus, you can heal me if you will. Yes. He knew Jesus could heal him. Be yes. that healed in the name of Jesus. Yes. He's a doorway of wisdom. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You're knocking at the door when you begin to fear God. He's a highway of righteousness. Those who hunger and thirst for after righteousness shall be filled. Praise the Lord. That's all you got to do is begin to tell the Lord, God, I want to be righteous. Lord, I don't want to walk more in the old ways no more. I want to get in the new past. I want to be what you want me to be. He's a God of loneliness. After all, he said he'd never leave or forsake ah, Is he not the God of loneliness? You get lonely and begin to pray a little bit. You know what you'll feel? You'll feel his loving arms yes. around you. You ain't even got to tell him you're lonely. He knows. See, he knows what we're going to ask before we ask about that. He's a God of hunger. He said, I'll supply all your needs. God of love. He loves, endures, his love endures forever, which is that mercy. My God, ain't no way I'm you're going to know it by your name. Philippians 2, 9 through 11 says, Wherefore God also highly exalted him and give him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is a son of man. Daniel 7, 13 through 14. I saw in the night vision and beheld one like the son of man came 
with the clouds of heaven. Oh, can you just imagine? Shut your eyes. Just let me. Everybody, come on, shut your eyes. Just imagine. All of a sudden in the clouds comes a man that's of the Son of Man. Oh, you understand? This is Isaiah. This is long before they saw Jesus Christ. But now he's looking at it. He's looking at it. We ain't even been born yet, Brother Metaville. God can do all things. Yeah. All things. Praise the Lord. <coughs> so a man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days. And they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. And his kingdom, that which shall be destroyed, shall not be destroyed. What he's seeing here is a vision. He's seeing the man Jesus Christ who hasn't been born yet. And they're taking him to where? To the Ancient of Days. Who's the Ancient of Days? Not the man Jesus. God Almighty. And they begin to understand that there was God the Spirit. And then there was Jesus Christ the man. But the Spirit of God dwelt him fully in him when he was born. But you, what you see is Isaiah is seeing a vision. And he's seeing Jesus come down in the clouds. And they took him to the Ancient of Days, which was God, the Spirit of God. Oh, glory. Before he was even born. And the Bible says he gave him dominion over all of heaven and all of earth. Power to save us in whatever. What God said is, I'm going to give him dominion over the earth and all the people. Because, see, I'm going to go in him. And when I get in him, I got all dominion. Y'all understand that? Yes. God is saying, I'm going to get in Jesus Christ the man. In there, he's going to have dominion over all the earth. <coughs> what about the said this evening? One God, Holy Ghost. Thank you. You name it. Cry in a loud voice. Don't never be afraid to speak out ever again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The devil has been trying to tell me that my physical ability is so that I can't cry out no more. But you're a liar, devil. I cried out this morning. Praise God. And I'm going to continue to cry out because my God is worth everybody that can hear me Hear me cry. Lord. Just as loud as I can. You know why? You know what happened this morning? See, I just kind of marched around Jericho. The walls of Jericho for a while. And when I took the pulpit, I began to shout. <laughs> and the walls began to come down. And I took my enemy. Praise God. He had to surrender. Sister Lou. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I ain't felt this good in a while. Matthew 9, 6 through 7, I'm trying to hurry. But that ye may know that the Son of Man has power on earth.
to forgive sins. Then said he to the sick of the ball, Arise, take up thy bed, and go into thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. Oh, glory! I want you to know this morning that he is able to say, Arise and be healed! And I'm going to close with this. I think it's the most beautiful reading in the whole Word of God. I like it all. But if I was going to choose one, it would be the most beautiful. It would be this one. Revelations chapter 1, 8 through verse 18. And I'm going to just read it all. I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulations and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit of the Lord's day. And I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia unto Ephesus and Samaria and the Pregnant and to Tyria, and to Sardis, and to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And being turned, I saw, and listen to this, seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of all this light, oh Lord, how do you do? And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like as unto a son of man, clothed to the garment down to the feet in the girt above about the paps with a golden girt. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fire bread, fine breaths, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as a sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars. And out of the mouth, when his sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, oh, I fell. Oh, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear.